Today we'll be looking at overlap volumes and how we can use them in our project. So by the end of this, we should have something like this. It's using a single overlap volume in the level. Uh, we have full access to change the size. And I'll go into how this was done a little bit later in the video. But basically, we can update the size of this and this will actually be updated visually in runtime as well. So when we play, we can see that that is drawing a debug box here at the same size as the volume. Basically, when I walk into this, it will say begin overlap. And when I leave, it will say end overlap. That's just tracking when we enter or leave this volume. And of course, you can extend this to do anything you need it to in your project, such as causing damage, healing the character, or whatever your volumes need to do. So this is going to get the main concept of just assigning these checks to a function and firing them off when something is overlapping. So to begin, this is using the a trigger volume class. So if you're creating a new C++ class, it's just the trigger volume class you're looking for. I've called mine a trigger vol. In here, I haven't really added very much. I've not needed to override anything or add any extra includes or anything like that. Did need to add a constructor. So this is a custom implemented constructor, the a trigger vol constructor here. I've added a call to the begin play as we're going to need to assign or find our overlap functions on the begin play and then I've added the void on overlap begin and void on overlap end and you will need the signatures so the class a actor overlapped actor and class a actor other actor so we can check what we have overlapped with so in the code file I just realized I misspoke a moment ago we're doing the bindings on the constructor which is why we need the constructor and the begin play we're just drawing a debug box so that bit is optional so on the constructor, this is the important bit, the on actor begin overlap. We're using a dynamic binding. If you wanted to know more about those, there is a topic on that in the playlist. We're passing in the actor reference, which is this, the context actor that is, and we are assigning the on actor begin overlap, which is built in to the actor class structure. We're binding that to the function, the on overlap begin, and also one for the on overlap end to the on actor end overlap function. Pretty much the same thing for both of these, getting a binding to the begin and end overlap. And that basically means that whenever the function in the parent class, the actor structure is called, whether that be the actor begin overlap or actor end overlap, our version of that will be called, which is the on overlap begin and the on overlap end. And quite simply, in both of these functions, I'm just doing a quick check to see that we do indeed have another actor and that it isn't equal to ourselves. So anything on the uh, the class itself, such as sub objects or anything that you may add on to the trigger volume, just to make sure it's not triggering anything like a child component or anything. And then if that's the case, I'm using the print string function just to print either overlap begin or overlap end, depending on which function is being called. So again, this is using a pre-processor directive to create a very simple to call print string that is at the top of the class here. Again, if you wanted to know a little bit more about preprocessor directives, that is also included as a separate topic in the playlist. And then the final thing to mention is the begin play. Like I've said, we've got a drill debug box. And I just wanted to show you how that we can get this to sync up with the box dimensions that you can set on the trigger volume. So all of those values that you saw in the editor, they're actually part of the standard trigger volume. I didn't need to add any of that manually to the actor class that was already there. So to get that working, I'm just drawing that at the actor's location, which is going to be the center point at which that box is drawn around. And rather than setting like a custom value or anything, so we could have set that to just be an arbitrary sort of 500 units. What I've done is I found the brush property, which is part of the trigger volume. So if you go into the parent class structures, you'll see that all of the brush properties have been set in the parent classes, if you wanted to know more about those. And I'm just setting the size of the debug box to be the brushes bounds dot box extent, which is basically the size at which we're setting the brush box bounds. And then as you saw, I've set the color to be orange, the drill persistent lines to be true. So that's always there, which again, you may not want as a kind of ideal structure for your project, but for debugging and just showing that it's in the right place. And if you have a habit where it's not responding when you think it should, then having some kind of way to draw that constantly just to check it is going to be very useful. Lifetime set to minus one. So again, this stays forever. The depth priority as zero and the line thickness set to five. So just a quick example of what I meant uh, about seeing the brush details on the parent classes. If we go back into the header file, we can go to the A trigger volume. We can navigate to our declaration. 
We can see that the parent is again just a child of the standard volume, so it doesn't have anything included here. So again, we can jump up another level to that. And we can see just here, we've got the A brush class, which is being declared. Uh, we can start finding where some of these things are being checked, the bounds and things like that. So then back up again, we can go one level higher and we've got the brush. So the brush is setting the things like the color. And again, this is where we can start seeing that everything is being declared that we can kind of override and use. And this is where we get to the actor section. So this is just a simple child of an actor with a bunch of stuff thrown in. And if you wanted to go all the way up to the actor class I've just jumped into, then you can see we've got some of the signatures and things for the overlap events, which is where I got that from. Another very easy way to get around Unreal is just to keep diving into the parent classes to see what is being declared where and why things might be happening. So that was just a quick side there. Back in the editor, just to recap. So what we have is the trigger volume here. This is just a simple version of the C++ class itself. So this was just dragged in from the volumes folder, the simple trigger volume. And again, we could set this up to do a very similar thing. Change the extent so we can see that it's a different uh, box extent. Uh, that, the X, Y, and Z, the box brush shape is the one which we are getting the box extent from. And that's what's gonna be drawn on the begin play so that we can just debug and make sure that we are overlapping the correct thing. So again, these are gonna work straight away. It's really as simple as that. The only other thing that you might encounter if that isn't working immediately is this is an overlap event. So you want to make sure that on the collision presets, you have the overlaps ticked to true specifically for the class that you're trying to trace against. So I'm doing this for the character class, which is of course a type of pawn on the collision presets that's checking against. So make sure that you have that ticked and also make sure that you have at least one of them generating overlap events. Usually you only need one of them to be checking uh, for the generate overlap events. But I think in this case, I have both of them set to do that anyway. So I'll just double check in the character class. The capture component is what has the collision set up. So on the collision drop down here, as I said, we can see the type there. I'm not going to say that too much just because the way that uh, YouTube likes to also generate my subtitles when I say that. And we can see we've got the generate overlap events. So that is going to ensure that when we collide with this, that we get the correct collision presets being checked and that that will indeed update. So just in case you think it's your code that might not be working if you followed it along and you're not getting those firing off, always check that your overlap events and the collision types have been set to the correct type. And then just to confirm, I realize I changed the same, pretty much both the same shape there. So we can change the Z and the X. And again, this will all update as soon as we press play. So it's very easy to come in and test with the uh, the box extents to make sure again that we can see that we're definitely overlapping this at the right time. So that's how we can use trigger volumes in Unreal C++ and how we can bind the overlap events to the parent on begin and on end overlap functions. As always, if you've enjoyed the video or found this useful, please do leave a like and share the video around. That really helps the channel to grow and for the content to help as many people as possible. Of course, be sure to subscribe to be updated as soon as any of the videos in any of the playlists on the channel are released and make sure you hit the notification bell so you have a slightly higher chance of actually receiving those notifications. As ever though, thanks for watching and I will see you all next time.